Here's Leo Messi on the attack for Barcelona. Finds Luis Suarez to Luis Suarez. Luis Suarez shoots. What a strike from Luis Suarez from just outside the box. And there you go, guys. Barcelona are Champions League winners. We have done it, guys. We are champions of Europe. The Barcelona career mode is back guys for season 2. Hey guys, how is it going? It is S2G and welcome to the first episode of season 2 with Barcelona. Last season was amazing. Your support on this series has been tremendous. The likes, the views, it was all great. Apart from that, trophies, we won the La Liga and the Champions League as well. And also transfers, we made some brilliant transfers as well. The likes of Eriksen, Pogba and all that. Hopefully this season we can do a lot better than that, maybe even win the treble, who knows. It is certainly going to be an exciting one and I really hope you guys are excited for the season. And if you guys are, make sure to show your support by dropping a like on this video, that'd be greatly appreciated. And if you're watching my content for the very first time, do subscribe as there's going to be a lot of career mode content on the channel. At the start of the season, the first thing we do in any of my career modes is just have a look at the squad we have at our disposal and see where we potentially may need improvement. So our forward line is of Luis Suarez, Coutinho and Leo Messi. It's a very, very good forward line to be honest. I mean, look at Luis Suarez. His stats last season were absolutely insane. The only downside is that he's now going down in some of his stats because he's 32, which is a bit frustrating. Leo Messi as well was absolutely brilliant last season for us. Top scorer, I believe, in La Liga for us. And even his stats are going down, which is frustrating, but... He's still 93 rated, Luis Suarez is still 90 rated. Now on the bench, we've got the likes of Timo Werner, Usman Dembele as well, Malcolm again who is amazing, and we also have uh, Abel Ruiz who's one of the Barca B youngsters who is in our team and this season, I'm looking to keep him as maybe a backup striker to potentially play in the cup games and all that. So yeah, our forward line is pretty solid right now. I may look to, you know, replace Luis Suarez at some point this season, but I'm not sure as of now. Our midfield is absolutely brilliant as well. Sergio Busquets, Christian Eriksen and Paul Pogba, that could well be considered the best midfield in the world. I mean, Eriksen and Pogba are brilliant and with Sergio Busquets just controlling the midfield for us, it just doesn't get any better. On the bench, we have the likes of Artur as well, who is really good in this game. He was one of the best midfielders for us last season. We also have Frankie de Jong, who's again a very solid holding midfielder. And we have the likes of Ricky Puig and Carla Selenia. We also have a lot of players like Vidal, Sampa, Gomez, Paulinho. Unfortunately, I will be looking to sell them so that I can give more opportunities to the likes of Alenia and Ricky Puig. I reckon you guys will appreciate that. Our defense last season was very dodgy, I'll be honest. We conceded some really stupid goals throughout the course of the season. But our fullbacks, I'm really happy with them. Kimmich and Semedo are just brilliant. Semedo arguably our best defender last season. Jordi Alba as well, brilliant. He might be going down in his overall soon because of his age, but we've got Grimaldo, we've got Miranda, so not really much of an issue there. Umtiti Longley, now this is where things get interesting. I love Umtiti, no issues with Umtiti at all. He's strong, he's quick, he's great on the ball, can pass out from the back as well. Perfect centre-back for Barcelona. Longley as well is a very good centre-back, but the thing with him is that he's left-footed and I don't like playing left-footed centre-backs, you know, in the right centre-back position. I just don't like doing that and to stay in goal is perfect. Tillerson is back up. I'm not sure about that because Tillerson last season wanted to leave. Now talking about the centre-backs, we've got PK of course and you'd expect me to play PK in there but last season, my days, PK, he was just awful and that is why I'm looking to potentially bring in someone else to replace PK. That is the plan I've got so far. So right now our team is looking absolutely brilliant and the only two improvements I can look at are one being a replacement for Luis Suarez because he's going down in his stats really quickly. Look at that, he's already down to 68 sprint speed and it's just going to get worse from now on. He's already 32 so we've got to you know, plan ahead for the future. And a replacement for Gerard Pique who is of course going down in his stats as well. And he's also 32. So, yeah, those are the only two positions I'm looking to strengthen, at least for now. But besides that, I think we've got a very competitive squad. Well, um, I reckon we should be able to make practically any signing we want this series. Because we've got about 290 million for this season. I reckon winning the Champions League and La Liga gave us this insane budget. 
But the thing is, we made a rule last season that we can only sign one player above the overall 85 in one transfer window. So we've got to keep at that rule. We've got to follow that rule and not break it. So keep that in mind when you suggest me your transfer suggestions down in the comment section below. Before we move any further, I wanted to introduce a brand new segment I'm including in this Barcelona career mode, which is called Season Goals. Now, if you've seen the objective screen in FIFA 19 that we've got, the board expectations one, I find that really bland, so I decided to include Season Goals or something where we'll have personalized objectives to, you know, work towards, and I think it'll be fun, you know, I've put some interesting objectives there. Now, I got the idea to do this from Chani Sports, who's a fantastic career mode YouTuber, and by chance if you haven't subscribed to you know his channel links will be in the description below make sure to go check him out now season goals what this means is we're gonna have six objectives as well in this list which we're gonna try and complete throughout the course of the season if we fail to do them we're gonna keep four feats as well which I'll let you guys decide so let's go through the season goals first first one we have is the hundred point record now and I believe 12 13 I think that was the season or was it 11 12 I'm not sure one of those seasons Barcelona managed to secure 100 points in La Liga in a 38 game season now that is a very difficult challenge for us to do in this career mode but we're gonna go for it guys we're gonna go for it we're gonna try and achieve the impossible to get the 100 points in a single La Liga season that is gonna be one of the goals the second one is the La Masia challenge give Ricky Puig a minimum of 20 appearances that's going to be difficult because of the competition but that's an objective we're gonna try and complete it keeping it clean keep 15 plus clean sheets in La Liga considering how poor we were defensively last season that might be a bit of a problem we've got some more objectives here the next one is teamed around the champions league record breaker this one is to break ronaldo's historic 17 goals in a single champions league campaign with any of our attackers i'd love to break that with leo messi i'll be honest golden forwards win both the pichichi and the ucl golden boot with a barcelona forward we did manage to do that last season i'm hoping we can do it once again so basically we've got to win the la liga's golden boot and the champions league golden boot and the last objective is probably the most difficult one win all five possible competitions this upcoming season we are in the spanish super cup we are in the uefa super cup champions league la liga copa del rey and we're gonna have to win all of that to complete this objective now let me know what forfeits i should do in the comment section below they can be real life stuff they can be you know selling players and all that it's up to you guys and apart from that there's also going to be one objective i want you guys to put in the comment section and that will be the fan objective so that's going to be in your hands make sure to let me know down in the comment section below what that objective is so i'm just adding some brand new stuff to you know make career mode more interesting for you guys well guys press conferences will be making their return in season two it's a feature you guys really love and you guys really put in a lot of comments in the comment section so i'm bringing it back again if you guys have any press conference questions put them down in the comment section below first question will you play ricky puig regularly in this upcoming season obviously now we've got a season goal we've got an objective to you know fulfill to play him in 20 co games in all competitions which means we're obviously going to be giving him a lot of game time and the fact that we're now in five competitions means that yes he is going to be getting a lot of game time the next question is from s2g is the goat well i appreciate the sentiment there are you going to simulate the lower league opposition games i hope you don't so we can see the youngsters and see how they play and so they can get game time absolutely i'm not interested in simulating games against the weaker teams like you know huesca a bar and all that because the fun is not there when i sim games right it's when i play with the likes of ricky pui jalenia and all that where we really enjoy the career mode and hence why i won't be simulating the lower league opposition games all right guys final question of the day are you looking forward to playing arsenal in the uefa super cup next season absolutely i cannot wait for this game guys a chance for us to win our potentially second trophy of the season because actually we have the spanish super cup before that and that is going to be two tremendous games last season if i'm not wrong we couldn't beat atletico madrid in both the la liga games one of them we lost and one we drew so yeah atletico madrid on a team that are definitely going to be causing us a lot of problems and i'm really excited to you know try and beat them and win at the spanish super cup but again the uefa super cup as well 
I definitely want to start off the season, you know, winning two trophies. That'd just be incredible. That is it, guys, for today's press conference. Let's move on. Preseason tournament. I feel like we don't really need the money and we don't really need to experiment with our tactics because of the fact that we've already done a season with this side. So we know how the team plays. So we are not going to be taking part in this season's preseason tournament just you know get things off started quickly all right so last season we accepted a loan deal for ramsey who is one of our youth academy prospects with a very high potential unfortunately this guy's just got one star skill moves which is a bit depressing but oh well he's gone on a one year loan deal and at the same time i thought i'd show you guys the players i've put on the transfer list Arturo Vidal, he's a player I'm looking to sell. The same with Paulinho. Ortola again, we don't really have a need for him. Andre Gomez, I don't really like the guy. Mark Cardona as well. Sampa, I've put him on the loan list because I still feel he may have a chance of becoming something and maybe a backup player for us in the future. Palencia, Cucurella and Pino, I've put them out on loan to, you know, get some extra game time. We've got way too many right backs and left backs, guys. So, loaning Palencia and Cucurella seems like the right option. Now, Pino is one of our youth academy prospects and I want him to, you know, get more game time and experience. So, that is why we are loaning him out. Honestly, guys, I've been waiting to talk about this transfer for a lot of time. Andres Iniesta. Yes, guys, I want to bring him back to Barcelona and I want him to retire at the club and not some Japanese club or anything of that sort. He deserves to retire at Barcelona. So we are going to be bringing him back to Barca, of course. Well, he's not really the player he was. He's still 85 rated, let's be honest. That's actually still brilliant. And the fact that we're selling Vidal gives us that extra space. And I reckon even if we don't play him in every game, even if we just use him as a super sub, he could provide us with a lot. Because I checked his stats out. Some of his stats are really high, even though he's 35. You know, he's got good ball control, good passing, just perfect. And he just had a lot to the team and I'd love to bring him back to Barcelona. I hope you guys are happy with this decision as well. Let's approach to buy Andres Iniesta. Alright guys, so Andres Iniesta is valued at 19 million pounds. I'm going to be offering just the 19 because of his age. I reckon Vissal Kobe will accept the offer. They want 24 and they want a set on clause as well. They rate Andres Iniesta, so... That is interesting. All right, let's propose a new transfer fee. Let's bring the transfer fee down to 22 million pounds. And of course, we'll keep the sell-on clause because why the hell not? And yeah, that is going to be our offer. 22 million pounds and a sell-on clause of 5% for Andres Iniesta to bring him back home. Let's see what they come back and say. All right, so they want 24.8 million. Well, we practically have unlimited money, so it shouldn't really be much of a problem. So there you go. Barcelona have secured Andres Iniesta, well, subject to contract agreement. So let's go ahead and try and, you know, sign the contract with Iniesta. Well, now we can actually see Iniesta's stats. He's got, well, yeah, he's not really the quickest of plays. But to be fair, 67 sprint speed is the same as Suarez and Suarez has been fine for us. He's got good reactions, decent balance. Look at that vision, 94 vision, 89 composure. 88 dribbling, 91 ball control, great shot passing, long passing. He's still got it, guys. He has still got it. So let's try and negotiate with Iniesta. We're going to offer him a rotation squad role. Let's see if he accepts that. He wants an important squad role. We're going to give him, I don't care. He may be a bit disappointed throughout the course of the season if we don't give him the game time he needs. But it's Iniesta, man. We've got to have him at the club at some point in this series. And why not do it now? So he wants a one-year deal. I will accept that. He's 35. I do understand that. So that should be it. Now, release clause. I do not want to put a release clause on him. It just doesn't make any sense. All right, they're fine with it as well. 48.5 in a signing. I'm not going to even... Uh, I'm not going to even negotiate. It's Iniesta. We've got to agree to whatever he demands. If Iniesta would have come here and asked 200,000, I probably would have paid because he is a club legend. Well, guys, there you go. We've brought back Andres Iniesta to Barcelona. I know he's 35. I know some of you guys who are not really Barca fans will be wondering, why the hell have I signed Iniesta? This is more of an emotional transfer rather than a bit of a tactical one. And one thing's for sure, Iniesta is going to be wearing the number 8 going forward. Alright, so let's talk transfers a bit. Now, we've signed Iniesta, but as I said, I still feel like we need a striker and also a centre-back. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to be making a signing in this episode. I want to get your input, your comments, and then decide what to do. So, regarding Luis Suarez, now, if we do sell him now, we can probably easily bring in Kylian Mbappe, who is actually 
insane in this game. He's 89 rated right now, he's only 20 and he's got some crazy good stats and I'd love him to be at Barcelona because he's just that good. It's up to you guys whether we make that transfer or not. We can make only one signing, keep in mind because we've got the rule where we can only sign one player in every transfer window above the overall of 85. So. Kylian Mbappe to replace Luis Suarez would be absolutely unreal, but Luis Suarez was brilliant for us last season, so I feel like we can easily keep him until January and then decide if we need to make any improvements. Virgil van Dijk though. This is my preferred option for the centre-back position to replace potentially Gerard Piquet. He is so, so good in this game. Look at this. He's got great composure, insane strength and in jumping, great sprint speed, and he is 6 foot 2, 6 foot 4 actually. Same height as PK. Just perfect. He's good on the ball as well, which makes it perfect. Now, the thing with PK is, PK didn't really have a great last season, which makes me a bit more inclined towards this deal. But again, it's going to be up to you guys. And in fact, if you guys don't want Mbappe or Van Dijk, let me know in the comment section what should we do. We'll decide whether we should make a transfer, who should we sign in the next episode, but do let me know your plans. And of course, in today's episode, we're not going to be you know, ending the episode off without a game. We're going to be playing one game against Atletico Madrid, the first leg of the Spanish Super Cup, so I'm hyped for that. Real Madrid of all teams, they want to sign a player from us? Well, absolutely not. There's no way we're selling to Real Madrid. I'm going to be rejecting this offer. Oh my god, Juventus have shown interest in purchasing Coutinho for a fee of £86.3 million. That is actually an insane sum of money. We can sell Coutinho and bring in Eden Hazard or something like that. Wow, that 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 just confuses me a lot, really. We're gonna we're gonna reject it now because I'm not sure you guys want to see Coutinho leaving. If you, let me know in the comment section, who would you rather have in the team, Coutinho or Hazard? I think that's an interesting discussion. For now, though, Coutinho is staying at the club. He's a great player. Okay, um, I I I don't even know what to say. Real Madrid have shown interest in purchasing Lionel Messi for 135 million pounds. Real Madrid, yes, Real Madrid want Leo Messi. Real Madrid, they seriously think we're gonna sell Messi to them? Oh, get out of here, just get out of here, we're rejecting this. Absolutely not, we're not selling a single player. I'm not gonna even sell Andre Gomez to Real Madrid. I do not want to be doing transfers or, you know, business with Real Madrid. So, yeah, we are, of course, going to reject this offer for Messi. You know, well, to be honest, if we do get an offer from Madrid for Andre Gomez or Paulinho or someone like that, I probably would sell them, you know? just to make their team worse. Oh man, this is super interesting. Chelsea have shown interest in purchasing Luis Suarez for a fee of about 90 million pounds. Yes guys, 90 million. I'm not gonna accept it, I'm gonna stall, I'm gonna wait and see because I don't know whether you guys want me to sell Luis Suarez or not. So first of all, we're gonna get through that game against Atleti and just see how things are. Well, we've received a transfer offer for Arturo Vidal which we are going to be accepting, you know, 21 million pounds. He's not really a good player in this game for me. And the fact that Ricky Puig and Carlos Eleni are doing well and we've now got Iniesta, there's no need to keep Arturo Vidal. All right, guys, it is time for the Spanish Super Cup final against Atletico Madrid. And you know what? We're going to have both the games in this episode. So you guys will find out whether we do win the Spanish Super Cup or not. I'm hoping we can get the job done, guys. It's against Atletico Madrid, a team that we weren't able to beat last season, so let us hope we can do that. So, I've made a few tactical changes, let me just discuss that. So, from now on, from the get-go, we're going to be using the 4-3-2-1 formation. It is my favourite formation right now in career mode. It just gets my fullbacks pushing up forward and putting in them crosses, and it just really works out well. Now, an alternative formation I have is using Messi Suarez as my strikers, Coutinho and Dembele out wide, Pogba Busquets in midfield, and so on. So this does sacrifice Eriksen, but the benefit of this formation is that we've got Messi and Suarez in positions where they don't really need to put in 
that much work rate and we can have Dembele Coutinho creating for them and you know Suarez and Messi in those goal scoring positions so you know for the first game I'm going to be sticking with my 4-3-2-1 let's get right into this one against Atletico Madrid all right guys first game of season two with Barcelona begins now and I'm not making any changes to the team I'm straight away going with my first team my strongest 11 at this point because I want to see how they fare against the top top team like Atletico Madrid on the bench though I've got Andres Iniesta and yeah we're definitely going to be playing him in this game at some point giving him his return to Barcelona we've got a solid team we're using the 4-3-2-1 let's get right into it Atleti's team is very good Griezmann Diego Costa as well Lemar Gelson Martins no wonder we struggled against them last season they've got some great players it's time to kick off season two with Barcelona We've got Costa on the ball. Costa in behind to Lemma and already Atletico Madrid on the attack. Thomas Lemma, what a save from Andre Ter Stegen and Longley almost put that one in. And we do get the ball away. Ter Stegen keeping us in this early on. Big save from the German. Oh no, Atletico again on the attack. Thomas Lemma. Paul Pogba is chasing, but he, a great cross played in. And there was nothing we could do about that. Their number 14 does score against us. And that's Rodrigo from midfield. There was literally nothing we could do about that. Lemar was through in tons of open space. He just had to whip in across. And we are shambles defensively as it is. I reckon we seriously need to bring in a centre-back, guys. Because this is getting really frustrating. You know, conceding these kind of goals from, like you know crosses but oh well one nil down we've got a lot of work to do oh no atleti again with the attack they are so difficult to play against guys diego costa now Longley puts in a good challenge but they still have the ball and Semedo forced to put in a sliding challenge i'm genuinely shocked with the way atleti are playing because i can't do anything in this game now paul pogba in behind to leo messi and this is where we might have a chance now messi on his left foot finds luis suarez suarez finesses it but a block from one of the atleti players that was our best chance throughout the course of the game and we couldn't even get the shot on target. Waits for Semedo's run. Semedo makes the run. Cross played into Luis Suarez with the header and we are back in it. And Luis Suarez continues to score goal after goal after goal for us as Barcelona equalise against Atletico Madrid. Nelson Semedo is back at it again with them crosses. Clever pass from Leo Messi as well. Messi, Semedo and Suarez involved for this goal. 1-0 and we are back in it. I'm making a couple of changes guys. Dembele comes on for Coutinho who didn't really have the best of games. Andres Iniesta is back at Barcelona. Back in that left sentiment position. And he will be replacing Christian Eriksen. Dembele to Andres Iniesta. Iniesta as well. Busquets. Now Messi. Messi to Semedo. This is brilliant for Barcelona. Cut back to Luis Suarez. But how was that blocked? That was brilliant from us. The plays man. Oh. That was such good football. Oh no, Atleti now playing some great football. This is very dangerous now. Nelson Semedo. Wait, what? We conceded a penalty for that? What just happened here? Oh, come on. How? This is bullshit, guys. This is just bullshit. We are being robbed here once again. The amount of stupid penalties that this game has. Look at that. Oh, to be fair. You know what? That kind of was a pen but still man i mean i didn't control busquets there so frustrating man we probably will be losing this game unless mark andre ter stegen can get the job done for us against bastos i'm going right to stegen saves let's go guys it's still one all we've got to get the ball cleared away come on we're not going to concede now oh no come on oh ter stegen saves again ter stegen is ridiculous probably man of the match in this game what a god what a game against Atletico Madrid. What a game against Atleti. And still we are unable to beat them, guys. It's been, what, three games now against them. And we are yet to get a result against them. That is certainly frustrating. But again, most importantly, we did not lose this game. We could have easily lost it towards the end of it. But to Stegen saved the day with a fabulous penalty save. And then, of course, on the rebound, of course, made another great save. So one all against Atleti in the first leg. They do have the away goal, but I reckon 
with a bit of luck we can get the job done and win our first trophy this season. Well guys, this causes us a bit of a problem. On Wednesday we've got the UEFA Super Cup Final with just a couple of days in between and now we've got the game against Atletico Madrid in a game where we need to score. So I'm going to have to prioritise and I'm going to definitely prioritise the UEFA Super Cup so I will be resting a few players in this one against Atletico Madrid. Let's hope it works out well and also take a look at the start of La Liga. We've got an insanely difficult start. I mean, Celta, we go away as our first game is difficult. Then Real Madrid and El Clasico, match day second, second match day. That's crazy. Valencia after that. And then we've got Huesca and then Atletico Madrid. That's just nuts. La Liga is going to be crazy for us this season. All right, guys, this is the team that I've gone for for this one against Atletico Madrid. A massive game for us. 1-1 on aggregate, which means we need to score. I've made a few changes to the team. Brought in Artur, De Jong, Dembele, Werner, even PK. PK now was a bit of a risk because I'm not sure how he's going to perform. He's so inconsistent. Although Leo Messi does start this game, which gives me a bit of confidence, but I'm probably going to sub him off at halftime or about the 60th minute because I need him fit for the UEFA Super Cup game. Away from home at the Wanda Metropolitano, the stadium where we won the Champions League last season. We've got a chance to win another trophy there. Let's go ahead and do it. That's what we're playing for, guys. The Spanish Super Cup trophy. Atleti versus Barcelona. Well, this is Atletico Madrid's lineup and they haven't made a single change to it, which I guess is the correct decision because they were pretty good in that last game and almost won the game. If not for De Stegen, we would have been in a very complex position in this game. So I guess it's Diego Simeone's right choice, you know, going with the same lineup. Oh no, Atleti already on the attack and they love their crosses, man. I just hate teams that constantly cross the ball and Atleti is just that kind of a team and we've just given the ball away. That's just awful from us and they might now have a chance. We've got to try and put in the tackle. It looks like they're going to go for another cross which is frustrating as Griezmann. Still Griezmann whips this one in. Tostegan gets it away. This game is going to be hard for us man. Eriksen finds Leo Messi. Messi finds Werner. One in behind to Semedo. Semedo cuts this one back and the keeper makes the save. A little bit towards the left of the keeper and that may have just gone to Eriksen. Griezmann crosses this one in. Diego Costa, come on. I just cannot stop conceding from crosses, guys. I don't know what to do. PK just let Diego Costa get in there without any problem. I'm genuinely, like, confused on what to do in this game, how to defend crosses. Atletico Madrid are like my boogie team. I cannot beat them. Oh, here we go. Maybe a chance now for us, Usman Dembele. Dembele gets it on his right foot, shoots, oh Usman Dembele, what a strike to get us the equaliser. Guess what, now we are on level terms, even on aggregate, 2 all now, and Usman Dembele, I genuinely thought the chance was gone when he, you know, did a fake shot to cut inside, but what a finish as well. Right foot, left foot, Dembele doesn't care, he doesn't have a weak foot, take a look at that. He gets it on his right, just smashes that one in. Off the crossbar and into the back of that. No chance for Jan Oblak. One all Barcelona. Oh, another cross. Just get away with these crosses. I hate Atletico Madrid, guys. All they do throughout the game is cross, 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 cross. That's literally all they do. And it's, it is so frustrating to play against. Look at this. They're going to cross it again. These guys are just cross merchants and there's nothing I can do about it. Oh, man. What am I supposed to do against these cross merchants? PK, Umtiti, none of them can handle Diego Costa. I am bringing on Luis Suarez for Timo Werner. Werner hasn't really had that impact I expected him to have. And I'm also bringing on Paul Pogba for De Jong just to get an extra, you know, physical player in midfield that could potentially help us do something because right now we are struggling. Another cross played in. This is turning out to be a bit of a disaster. I cannot deal with crosses. This entire game, Atletico Madrid have just gone down the wings. Crossed it in, crossed it in, crossed it in again, and they've scored all three times. It, this game's a joke, guys. This game is genuinely a joke. The amount of goals I can see from corners and crosses is just ridiculous. We need a centre-back, guys. We need a centre-back. Oh, now Diego Costa whipping in another cross. This is a freaking joke, guys. This is a freaking joke. Four crosses. I'm genuinely on the verge of breaking my controller. It's 4 a.m. in the morning, I'm playing this game and I'm genuinely furious right now. We are losing 5-2 to Atletico Madrid. I just don't know what to do. They cross it and they score almost every time. How do I deal with this team? Suarez should score, does score. 
But there's, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a pointless goal, this one, because we, have, we are still losing 5-3 on aggregate. If maybe we could have taken our chances, you know, the few ones we had could have been different. Well, guys, full time and we've lost the Spanish Super Cup to Atletico Madrid. We won this competition last season, but I guess we've got to accept we cannot win everything. At the start, I was talking about potentially winning all five competitions. Well, there you go. We've lost the first one already. It's honestly depressing, but now we cannot, you know, afford to, you know, feel bad about ourselves and just think about this loss too much because in a couple of days, we've got that massive game in the UEFA Super Cup against Arsenal and there's no way I want to lose a couple of finals back to back in a row as well. Oh, that is seriously frustrating, guys. Well, um, it does look like we're going to be failing one of our, you know, season goals, which was the five of the best ones, which was to win all five possible competitions this upcoming season. That is disappointing, but I said that I'm going to be making these season goals a bit difficult, so a lot of them may be ones where we don't complete, but I'm hoping we can at least complete three out of the six of these season goals. But disappointing to have already failed in one of them in basically the first episode of season two. We've sold Paulinho to West Ham for 32.5 million. That's a brilliant transfer in my opinion, and we'll receive about 29. We've got a massive offer for Timo Werner for 63 million pounds. You know what? I'm going to negotiate this because that is an insane sum of money. Timo Werner, he's been on and off for us. Some games he's been great, but he's not been, you know, spectacular or something like that. What we could do is sell Timo Werner for this insane money and sign Mbappe. We could have Luis Suarez on the bench. Who cares? I think that would be insane. So let's negotiate for Timo Werner, at least for now, and just see how things go. If I can sell him for upwards of 70 million, I'm down. I'm honestly down. Let's propose new transfer fee. Let's counter with 70 million. He's not been that great for us. That's the thing. He may be 23. He may have high potential. He's just not been good for us. He may be not be a fit, you know, for Barcelona. So we've countered 70. They are ready to offer 66 and a sell-on clause. You know what? I'm going to accept it. 66.6 .6 million pounds for, of course, Timo Werner. I'm down. I'm honestly down for that. Let me know in the comment section if you guys think this was the right deal. Defenders to watch in 2019. All of these are Barcelona defenders. That's basically our back line. But guess what? We are shocking defensively and we just conceded four goals to Atletico Madrid. So what on earth are EA up to? So next episode though, guys, Barcelona versus Arsenal. Leo Messi versus Aubameyang. Hopefully Messi can get off the mark. In the next one because he's not been that great for us so far Luis Suarez though has been phenomenal scoring a couple of goals but I'm excited man for the UEFA Super Cup and before we end off today's episode let me just let you guys know that transfers will be in the next episode we're going to try and bring in at least one player it's going to be up to you guys you know let me know what we should do regarding transfers in the comment section we basically have unlimited funds let's just say that so we can sign anyone we want also, time for you guys to vote for your inform player of the episode. Your first nominee is Nelson Semedo, who I thought was brilliant throughout the course of this episode. Yes, we conceded a lot of goals, but going forward, this guy is just a menace. Your second nominee, Luis Suarez, who scored in both games and was brilliant as well. But unfortunately, we just weren't good enough to, you know, defend and hence why we couldn't win. But those two are your nominees for this very first episode of Season 2. Click the i button on the top right of your screen to vote for them. And that, guys, is it for the first episode of Season 2 with Barcelona. Of course, it is going to be a tough challenge this season. I was expecting us to perform a lot better against Atleti, but I guess the fact that we've got a lot of aging players, it's going to be harder than last season. You know, even Messi is going down in his stats. Luis Suarez as well. So we cannot win everything, but... Hopefully that battering that we took to Atleti could be a learning lesson for us and going forward we can, you know, play better and, you know, get better results. But anyways, do let me know your transfer suggestions and all that kind of good stuff. Drop a like if you've enjoyed this video, that'd be greatly appreciated. If you're watching my videos for the very first time, do subscribe for more FIFA 19 career mode content. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another one of these Barcelona career mode episodes.